Hello, dear friends. We are sincerely glad to welcome you again. And today we are going to talk to the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mikhailovich, on behalf of our viewers, with great pleasure, I'd like to thank you for the knowledge that is voiced in our videos, for the truth that is voiced, and for extending a helping hand. Because, in fact, with your help and support, it is much easier to build a creative society, to follow the spiritual path, to study oneself, to explore oneself as personality, and, of course, to be strengthened on this path, and always, in all situations, to remain who you truly are. Our viewers understand more and more that to remain oneself does not mean to strongly cling to one's sins, perhaps mistakes or false values, but to remain oneself is, above all, to be personality, to be part of the Holy Spirit, to be where life is, to be in the here and now, and each and every day to learn how to love, to learn how to love from the best teacher, who is God Himself. In our videos you said that gaining life is actually easy. And when prophets came, they also talked about it. They spoke simply and just talked about what any person can learn. But unfortunately, the knowledge was distorted and it was turned into science. Yet what science can there be in love? One just needs to love. One of our viewers shared an interesting story of his. He said that at some point he lost interest in studying consciousness. It told him, why should you study primary consciousness or secondary consciousness? Let them live their life, while you, as Personality, should simply love. And then he pondered, but maybe such an indifferent attitude to studying one's consciousness is because consciousness itself suppresses and blocks this interest in studying oneself? The question is the following. Is it enough just to love, or is it actually necessary to study consciousness too? Well, it depends on what goal a person has. If he wants, let's say, to attain inner peace, to get away from tensions, and that's all. That is, to make his world more peaceful and, you know, sort of joyful, I would say, like the one a hermit crab has. To feel comfortable in three-dimensionality, right? Quite right, yes. That he doesn't care about anything. He is in love. He's in his little shell. And don't touch me. Then that's enough. But if we are talking about gaining eternal life, about exploring this world, then, my friends, you have to study your consciousness. Why? Because when you know the enemy, you know how he acts, and then you are ready for anything unexpected, so to say. You will see how the demon will try to manipulate you. That's very important. And it wasn't a slip of the tongue. Our friends already understand and know that consciousness, our consciousness, is far from being ours because they, first and foremost, have an experience of observing and studying it, right? This is very important. Why? When a person embarks on the spiritual path, he must walk along it firmly, as they say, on two feet. Whereas, if he jumps on one foot, so to say, even if that foot is love or accumulation of that love, he won't jump far. I will give a simple example. If a person went out into the desert, for example, and he is simply walking, one foot is stronger and the other foot is weaker, then he will come back to the same point from which he left. And that's true. Why? Because one foot will take bigger steps, while the other one will take smaller steps. Sort of walking in a circle. Mm -hmm. Sure. If a person doesn't move away from Satan, he won't be able to get closer to God in that case. It's a simple, the simplest example. Meanwhile, in order for a person to turn away from Satan, to stop being his slave, first of all, he must realize that he exists, I mean, the enemy of humankind, that in fact, shaitan really exists. Whereas in this case, excuse me, without studying your consciousness, without observing what's going on in your personal world, my friend, you won't succeed. However, there are nuances here too. You shouldn't fight because it is pointless. 
You know, I beg your pardon, I very much remember the words of one of our viewers. It makes me very happy that people are already growing up and coming to such interesting insights. She said, I also used to believe that a spiritual feat is something that involves warfare, overcoming something, that there should be tears and some kinds of emotional states. But then I realized that it's a quiet choice inside. There must be a struggle, right? Which you make as personality. Yes. And in the same way, very quietly, this consciousness falls off and goes away. And in the same silence, that's right. Real, true life arises and multiplies. That's right. But the first steps are always conditioned by some kind of a struggle, some kind of confrontation, and an attempt to have a dialogue even within a person himself. Yet, this is pointless, friends. Although this experience, the primary experience, everyone will have it. Yet, what is the right way? The right way is not to fight shaitan, not to be at war. A human is unable to defeat him. Well, you know, in attempt to overcome shaitan within oneself, to out-argue him, to overpower him, is the same as an attempt of a person who is standing on the ground to push the sun away. That's impossible. Shaitan is strong. He is the prince of this world. The entire material world is his home. A human is dual. There is a part of the spiritual world in him, and there is a part of the animal world the world of shaitan. And here it is very important what a person chooses. If a person chooses life rather than death, in existence, in the state of subpersonality, in hell, then I'll put it this way, he should simply turn shaitan off, move away from him, not serve him and not listen to stupid ideas, which he imposes on the person. After all, let's just say, shaitan doesn't beat a person, and he doesn't force him. He merely gives him a thought, just that. But by accepting this thought, a person himself does evil. Shaitan doesn't do evil. Evil is done by people. This is really so. And here's a simple question. What is evil? Who created evil? God or Shaitan? What is evil? Let's ask Tatiana, as per our tradition. Tatiana, what is evil? I already know the answer to this question. <laughs> so share it with friends. It's the absence of God. The absence of love. The absence of love, right. Yes. If there is no love in a person, shaitan will reign in him. Then there will be anger, hatred, and everything else in the person. And when a person moves away, while he can only move away from shaitan quietly and peacefully, only by going over to the side of love, choosing life, and simply not serving shaitan. So in this case, the more love there is in a person, the less the beast inside him will be. And when the beast manifests itself in him, well, we're all human beings. We get distracted, it doesn't matter with what. A shoelace comes undone in the middle of the road, you bend down, thinking about the shoelace and get distracted. There's the road or something else. And at this moment, a car passes by, splashes you. And immediately something boils up. Why does this happen? It boils up. When you are ready to boil up, my friend. But if there is a mass of love in you, you perceive everything logically, naturally, and correctly. You stopped in the wrong place. You tied your shoelace badly, and the person driving that car didn't mean to splash you at all. He's just driving, minding his own business. But this is a very convenient combination for your consciousness, just to boil you up, so that you forget about love, forget about joy, get distracted, start being nervous, and Let's say, swear at that driver who didn't want to offend you at all, let alone splash you when he was driving through a puddle next to you. Here's a simple combination that can actually be fatal for a person. Why? Once you get distracted, surrender, become emotional, and forget about your inner world. That's it. As for fighting shaitan, you know, this is stupid. 
Yes, consciousness suggests to you that you should resist, you should be… It comforts your ego. Yes, you should be a warrior. That you can win. You should win. Yes. You should really resist. However, to fight shaitan, either physically or emotionally, is the same as catching the wind in a net. It's pointless. You see? I mean, you seem to be doing something, but in fact, you waste your life on that very shaitan. Your anger and your petty vibrations are just fodder for shaitan. Merely fodder. And you should be aware of that, friends. Therefore, let's put it this way, there is no darkness where there is light, and where there is no light, there is darkness. Where there is no love, there is the beast and there is shaitan. There are lies and all the devilry. But where there is love, there is God. And where there is God, there is no devil. This is the most important point. So, first and foremost, yes, you should learn to love. But in order to understand that there is God, after all, our consciousness, everyone's consciousness, has doubts until a person gains experience. Faith is empty, hope for the unknown. But when you have knowledge, when you have experience, then you don't have faith. You have knowledge. And this is much more important. When we believe we can do something or trust someone, but it's a tool, again, I would say, it is still a tool of shaitan. Why? Because by giving you faith, my friend, he immediately gives you doubts as a counterbalance. He makes you doubt. Let's say, due to certain reasons, a person has decided to embark on the spiritual path, and shaitan immediately tells him, Are you sure that there is God? Just look. While you lead a normal human way of life, while you strive, for knowing the spiritual world, for attaining God's love, for liberation, for life. And you hope for heaven. At this time, people, your peers, your friends, live a wonderful and free life. They do not suppress any emotions in themselves or anything else. They do not engage in stupidity. They live for real. They are free, like a beast in the forest. They run wherever they want and do whatever they want. They live life to the fullest while you have locked yourself in this cage in the hope that you will gain life after death, right? And shaitan immediately begins to use what? It's true, friends. He begins to use scriptures. How can you be a sinner if you are a Christian? After all, Jesus Christ came and took away all sins, and He said that through Him you will get into heaven. What will shaitan say? He will say, it's enough for you to go to church. Right? And light a candle. Cleans the vessel. Yes, absolutely right. Into which grace may come someday. Everything is simple and easy. It's enough to watch adult men in women's dresses holding a theatrical performance, to light a candle, to pray, to mutter what you were told, and that's it. And you've gained life. Isn't that what Shaitan will say? In Islam, he will say it a little bit differently, using different words, but the essence will be the same. And that's it. So if you don't know, my friend, that there is the devil, you will never understand that there is God. The first whom a person should cognize is the devil. You should realize that his devilish part, a little demon, is actually your consciousness. It is in you. And sometimes it lives instead of you and manipulates you, my friend, as it wants. It manipulates you as it wants, as long as you let it do this. But if you become more mature, if God's love becomes something meaningful to you, if you want not just to become a subpersonality, but to really gain life, then naturally you will observe who gives orders in you. So, while studying your consciousness, where thoughts come from, why? In your consciousness, there is a split into two, three, or even more parts. Why someone boils up in you, while someone else says, no, you shouldn't boil up, you should confront silently. Why are there some dialogues going on in you? 
So when you begin to see these dialogues, you begin to understand who you are. And when you understand who you are, you will perfectly understand that these small demons are a part of one big and powerful system, whose name is Shaitan, devil or Satan. It doesn't matter what we call it. Let's call it the absolute macrocosm or something else, the unified information field. That way, it will be clearer for scientists, right? So, whether it is a shaitan or an information field, it manipulates you and simply burns through and lives your life instead of you. However, when you've realized that there is the devil, and naturally, it means that there is God, you begin to aspire towards him. You begin to accumulate this God's love, all your attention. Ideally, in your free time, even when you have a couple of minutes, yet you can concentrate all your attention on sending your love to the spiritual world. And when you are busy, you can send at least a part of your attention to the spiritual world and not break this connection. You will certainly feel a response as well when you are sincere, when you really strive for that. And after receiving a response from the spiritual world at least once, you will never forget it. Although Shaitan, if he is strong in you and has the right to speak, will tell you that it was an illusion, it was a suggestion, it was self-deception. You know, we often fall into self-deception. Sometimes we confuse the reality in which we live with a dream that has passed. The following things happen sometimes. A person recalls something, some events, and he cannot even understand whether those events happened or not. He clearly knows that those events happened, while other participants say they did not. And at this point, Shaitan says, You have dreamt it. That's why it is this way. Isn't it so? Or those events took place in your head with a person's phantom. Absolutely right. Or it was from parallel worlds. Consciousness will tell you anything. The main thing is to confuse and distract a person. And there is another important point. When a person simply begins to study his consciousness, you know, it's like a person trying to accumulate love without exploring himself. This is one part, one foot. While the second part, is when a person tries to study consciousness without a goal. I mean, he has no goal. His goal is just to study consciousness. It's impossible to study consciousness by means of consciousness, friends. But when a person has a goal, and the goal is spiritual salvation, it is gaining spiritual life, eternal life, then the person begins to study consciousness already with a purpose. Although, at the beginning, Yes, at the beginning he starts studying his own consciousness by means of his own consciousness. By means of secondary consciousness he studies the primary one, and by means of primary consciousness he studies the secondary one. Whereas, at the beginning, he even gets confused, not understanding which consciousness is where, what happens in him and what is wrong. And that's normal. That's really normal. The first steps to study and observe it are always accompanied by comments from that very consciousness. In other words, demons do not allow you to tear the mask off them at once. And a person should make a lot of effort. There occurs binding to neurons of the brain, an attempt of materialization of our consciousness. You know, this way, consciousness always tries to hide everything somewhere. After all, that very devil always hides in the shadows. He hides where it is difficult to find him. However, I'll say it again, if a person tries to study consciousness just for the sake of studying it, how it works and what it is, after all, many scientists today are actually trying to explore this subject, what role the brain, other neurons of our body, and many other things play here. But they do so from the position of science without love, without aspiration towards God, then, paradoxically, enough, there are only two options. If a person seriously begins to study his consciousness, I emphasize, without love, without aspiration towards the spiritual world, then the person has the first option, a psychiatric hospital. And the second option? 
is some kind of a religious organization. This is where he will definitely end up if he doesn't stop in time and doesn't stop studying consciousness in time. This has been confirmed by a rather large number of very smart people who studied consciousness, primarily their own one. Yes, it is possible to safely study someone else's consciousness by observing someone, to try to tell something to that person. Again, based on observations or those very manipulations, especially if, let's say, a doctor's consciousness is strong, his demon is strong, then he can easily manipulate a weak demon in another person, his patient, and actually achieve quite good therapeutic results, even from the perspective of psychology. But this is merely a superficial acquaintance. There is another option. When one tries to study the work of consciousness, again, through the brain, simple trivial connections between those very neurons which act as a receiver and a transmitter, merely as a connecting link between consciousness and personality. And our brain, in general, thinks only by means of pictures. There's nothing but pictures there. While what you hear, you hear the voice of the devil in your head. That's first and foremost. When thoughts come to you, and notice, they come to you being already unfolded and complete. Even more so, the more you give and invest your attention there, the more it unfolds. You know, it's like an email. It comes and seems to take little space. But when you open it, start reading it closely, and thinking hard about it, it gets bigger and broader, with lots of links, redirections, you know, active links. You click them and you are turned to another direction. That's how shaitan manipulates a human being. Therefore, when you really study consciousness, seriously, you should have a goal. And the goal must be not to explore shaitan in order to become his master. He will not allow that. He hasn't yet given such power to any mortal. But the goal of a human should actually be to become immortal. This is just one of the stages of understanding that the devil exists. And since the devil exists, so does God. So, it is precisely this understanding of how our consciousness works and how demons manipulate us that makes a person stronger, calmer, and more confident on the spiritual path. This is important. Right? Without love, we are sounding brass. Absolutely It right. is necessary to be a full vessel. If there is no inner light in us, we are nothing but darkness. Again, it is very important for a person on the spiritual path to really study consciousness, at least to understand. Not that the devil exists, that goes without saying. Otherwise, you will not understand that there is God. Yes, you can believe, be aware of that, but you will not know. Actually, a person will be able to study and know that God exists when he acquires let's say, a response from the spiritual world in his love. When he receives this love, then all doubts disappear. But he has yet to reach this stage. So, an important stage is, again, the study of one's own consciousness. Why is this important? It's important to understand where primary consciousness is and where secondary consciousness is. And the most important thing is where you are, my friend. If you don't come to understand that you are neither primary nor secondary consciousness, then tell me, who will go along the spiritual path? You? The one you don't even know at times who you are? Or primary or secondary consciousness? Who will go instead of you? And there is a question. If it's not you who will go, then where will the devil go? Will he really go to heaven? Is he a donkey to carry you as personality through heaven's gate? He will carry you to hell, where he will boil you in a cauldron and cook a soup of you for himself. Even though it's already an allegory, it is actually 
literal, and it is worth thinking about. In other words, without love, a person is either an observer from secondary consciousness or an observer from primary consciousness. Or an observer from primary consciousness. While he has to rise up and break out of this microsphere to see how he is manipulated by shaitan. And for that, he needs to realize that he is not consciousness. This is actually very easy. Let's say, the spiritual path is easy to traverse for any human. It becomes hard only because of Satan's temptations. But when a human understands how he is manipulated by shaitan, he becomes free, while only a free human can enter heaven. That's the point. Self-knowledge is true freedom. Of course. It is the most valuable knowledge a person can acquire and the most important experience a person can gain in this world. Because behind this knowledge, there is life. This is very important. But if a person is really steadfast and, without limping, on two feet, he walks along the road towards life, he will certainly reach it. And by getting filled with this love from the spiritual world, a person will certainly gain life. That's when everything changes. But you have to come to that, friends. And the most important thing is not to be lazy and not to try to hide like a hermit crab from this entire world. Yes, the world is illusory. That's true. But it is illusory only in its very beginning. It is illusory because it is merely a play of shadows. But for us, when we are here in three-dimensionality, when we are locked in this prison of shaitan, while we mature, you know, like, I would say like a butterfly in the cocoon of this hard and tough world, in order to gain life and freedom in eternity, this world is hard, unjust, sometimes grievous. When there is no God in it, when there is no God in it, it is also dreary, I would say, and sometimes even hopeless. However, when God is in you, even this world around you changes. You no longer see just a doomed herd of animals like you in it. But when you have gained life, or strive to gain this life. You see a mass of potential angels. You see the presence of the spiritual world in all living beings as a part, that part which gives life. Then, excuse me, darkness ceases to exist. You understand that darkness only comes to people when they close the doors of their souls because God always keeps them open. It is us only us who close them by shaitan's instigation. So, friends, everything is very simple. It's enough not to be lazy, not to hide from reality, to study, not to be lazy, and to allocate time to studying the work of your consciousness so that it starts serving you, but not you serve it. Don't hurry to say the words which consciousness palms off on you. But first, analyze them. Why? And for what purpose shaitan palms off this word on you, which may offend another person or may be untrue? After all, any introduction of an untruth here diminishes the truth in this world. Isn't that so? And the less truth there is here, the more there is shaitan, the more there is darkness and less light. You see how simple everything is. We, people, are the reason that evil predominates here, in our world, and not love. But it is us, people, who can change everything. And in order to do that, friends, it's enough for us to simply love each other. Thank you. Thank you very much, Igor Mikhailovich. Thank you, friends. Peace be with you.